Is the room filled all the way up? Let me know. On the wheel, me and your mama in real serious. Come on. So it look like I'm be around here. I ain't trying to be your daddy or nothing. But if you need some advice, feel free to talk to me. No doubt, if you've been watching and you never left, put in the chat, we back, baby. We back. We back. Come on. Let's get it. Cowboys versus Raiders. Post-game analysis and report from yours truly. Second to none on top of this. Come on, baby. Law Nation Sports, yours truly, straight off the top ropes. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Imitated but never duplicated from yours truly. Sounds on. You're listening to absolutely nothing. And I mean just that the number speaks for itself. The best. Come on. Hey, oh. let's go, baby. Appreciate you and you and you. Thank everybody for tuning in to the nation. One love to all that's hearing and seeing this uh, Cowboy Nation. So the Cowboys finally... Finally got them a dub. Oh, my goodness. It feels good. Let's jump, baby. Let's jump for joy. And on top of this, Cowboy Nation, we are back with it. Of course, we've seen some things that we can sit back and say, well, maybe motivation was the situation. Maybe it, all it took was a little motivation. And now we've seen Willie Greer, not Will, but Willie Greer, Show up and show out in this game. Throw him for 300 yards. Throw him for a QBR, I believe, for 122. Being able to also run two tubs in with his feet. And, you know, we start to say to ourselves, is this my friend? Is this Will Vick over here? And also he threw for two touchdowns. And this was also a come out party for my guy. Yes, indeed. He says uh, day two. Uh, says uh, pretty much Willie Greer, 29 for 35, 305 yards, two tubs, zero INTs, nine carries for 54 yards and two tubs. Those are these official stats for my guy, D-D, D-Day 2, you know, appreciate you. All right, so that all rhymes for your mind, baby. Yeah, no picks. And he was missing that ball in, too. There was a several plays that he missled that ball right in there, back shoulder right in there, and the receivers, you know, they were able to come down with the ball. I think that even uh, Houston, even though the ball was a little too tall for him, he still is a great Jerry Rice with the braids to the back. Y'all remember that? You know, with the braids to the back, we we'll say if the ball touch your hand, you got to catch it. If the ball touch your hand, you got to catch it. You know, that's just what it is. But uh, motivation was the cause. Uh, shout out to Will Greer. Uh, the craziest thing is the trainer, like I said, you know, we, we had him on the show just yesterday. Uh, he said he works with Will Greer. He works with Trey Lance. He works with Dak Prescott. And what I'm saying is that when you have a guy that works with the same guy, you start to think alike, right? You start to try to mat pattern your game behind it. And he tweeted to me, and it says literally here, Will is absolutely playing free now. He's playing free, y'all. And that is not a, a good thing. That's a great thing. But the problem is, is the time may be too late. So he knows and he understands that, hey, there are literally 31 other teams with opportunity with big checkbooks that can probably write me a check that I can say to myself, I can't refuse that, right? And that could be the situation if the Cowboys release Will Greer and he is out there on the streets for someone else to scoop him up. It will be a hard choice. Also, uh, let me know how y'all feel about my guy, Rain. I thought you was getting too old for this, Prescott. Oh, my goodness, Prescott. 
Yes, Prescott. He was the dude that was calling the plays. And all we had to do is have, you mean to tell me, that all we needed was Dak Prescott to call the plays and we are average 30 points a game. I'm just playing with y'all, man. I'm just playing with y'all. Byron Joe says, uh, appreciate you for the 199 for your mind. He says, I see an OC position in Dak's future. You know, yes, indeed. Yeah, hashtag Dak for OC. I, I love I love that vernacular there. I love that. Uh, we got a present. Boy, we done hit all type of numbers. The present's falling out of the sky on me, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Rush is better. Will is good. Backup, not a starter. He should be the third string now. This is from NC underscore base hunter. Appreciate you. Now, now let me ask you this. For those who was out there in Oxnard this season and last season, if you was out there getting a chance to see the quarterback competition, right, and let me know who performed better even in practice. And last season, of course, who performed better in preseason. I want to know. I need to know. Now, here's the thing. Here's the caveat. Rush. He made, he stayed healthy last year, and he was awarded the opportunity to showcase his skill sets in the remainder of those preseason, and especially when Dak Prescott broke his thumb into many pieces, right? But Will Greer, he got hurt, <laughs> and he was no, long, no longer to perform and get out there to showcase his skill sets and his assessment. What I'm trying to say here is I'm not trying to put one against the other. It's just injuries came at the wrong time. It did. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Hunter Lubke. And, and, and to, the, to my guy's factual point right here, in the regular season, it's all about winning, and winning do matters. And Rush, when his number was called, Hey, although we averaged 17 and a half points per game when he was in there, we won. And that's the main thing. We won, baby. And that's the name of the game. Uh, Greer is better than Lance right now. This is from Bubble Berry Boy. Appreciate you. As long as it wasn't Bubble Guts, right? Shout out to you, Berry Boy. <laughs> uh, LDTV, Lions Den Television, right? So, so let me ask you this. What's your name? You know, Law. Lipke, or is it Lipke? Yeah, makes the team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hunter do makes the team. Now, originally, your name is LDTV, right? So you had to put in parentheses of what your name really is, Lion's Den Television, right? I like that, that concept, you know, because he got the lion. And if you got the heart of the lion, I think it's the heart of the tiger, but it don't mind because I might have messed up both of them. But anyway, all when you when you say lion anything, I think of this right here. Where my where my lion? Uh, yeah. Oh no, wrong one. Not that one. Oh my bad. You know, it's somewhere around here. Come on, where my lion at? Come on, here you go. There we go. Woo! Lions Den, Michael Parsons. Can you do me one favor, bro? Can you put number eleven on that Lions Den? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't mean to give you the uh, the goofy uh, uh, laugh right there or cry or whatever when he get his toe ran over. You know how to mean to do that to you. But hey, it's a Lions Den. It's preseason too, Freedom. Yeah, it is preseason. So what else can we build off of this preseason? 19 looked pretty good. We went over that. Uh, Dontario Drummond, he looked pretty good. Who else? Malik Davis, if anybody can put together his scouting agent, can put together a highlight reel and show when he leaped over that defender and say, hey, I got athleticism. I can run in between the splits. I'm a hard down here runner. You give me an opportunity, I can at least give you an average of four and a half yards per toe, right? I can give you a little small burst and acceleration here. I'm a team player. I'm not, I'm not mad if I'll be the second string or the third string, allegedly, you know. So those are things that he made a case for himself. Uh, Jake the Great says uh, KJ was solid. He was. He Mario hopped him. Yes, he did. Is boss man making his team? I'm quite sure. When I'm telling you guys, when you talk to Bone Fossil, he bangs of the table about the people that he wants. 
that he would go to bat for. And by Bones Fossil being one of the coaches in a very important role, he will fight for Kelvin Joseph to be on his team. But what if I told you, like Ripley's, believe it or not, not just him will fight for someone to be on his team, but also you can contextualize the fact that Al Harris will fight. He'll fight for Kelvin Joseph to be on his team. So he got a head, he got a special teams coach, and he got a positional coach that will fight for Kelvin Joseph to be on his team. Josh Butler, he was out here, you know, the guy, the wide receiver that he was covering, caught 122 yards. Two times that I saw he played poor technique, but outside of that, he played a very solid game, ladies and gentlemen. It was very solid. Yeah, Deuce Vaughn is on this team. You know, there's no, they didn't even play Deuce. They like put the bubble wraps around that kid right there, you know, <laughs> put the bubble wraps. Santana, appreciate you. Cowboys are... S H I T on you, they they on you. Come on, Santana. Appreciate you though. Santana, appreciate you though. Uh <clears throat> William Bailey. Will is a dude that got wheels. Yes, indeed, he got some wheels. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do Eric Scott Eric Scott was off and on. I think he had, let me go to his stat line for your mind. Appreciate y'all, man, so much. Eric Scott had literally. Three total tackles, three solos. He came down the field. Uh, 39, who's 39 is Mendenhall. Oh, Mendel, my bad. Mendel, D'Angelo Mendel. And to be fair to y'all, I got to sit back and watch the All-22 and look at some of the things, and I got to re-watch this game about multiple times so I can give you guys my thoughts on um, – on some of those other boys, especially, especially the defensive front, a lot of guys was on the ground. Uh, from what y'all was telling me, which y'all y'all are very smart and cerebral with this, you guys were telling me that um, Alex Isaac Isaac Alacon was on the ground, you know, a lot, and that's not a good look. That's definitely not a good look when you start thinking about this, man. And when you start talking about a guy being on the ground, first time, and you know, like I said, I thought he, I thought he was outstanding. How does that help him master this offense? And we've been talking about that. Yeah, know, it's trips play. to the plate. It's tri- it's attem- it's tri- attempts to the plate. I mean, every, Coach Mike every, McCarthy you know, analogy the looking for you just you know the emotional, mental you know rehearsal and just being in it is is so important. And and I could tell you from experience, you know, when you when you when you're out a year, you could watch all the film that you want. You you can sit there and you look at all the analytics you want and uh, and go back and read all your you know. Reports and so forth, and but if you're not in it, if you're not, because you got to, you got to be like that to, to play quarterback, and you got to be like that to, to call plays. And if you're not in it, it's it's different. So that, that's where I, I you know, it, that's a really good experience for him to play the game, which you know, Cooper's over there playing the game too as it's being called. But but for him to call it, um, you know, that's to me, that's that, that's just part of preparing to, to play. That's that's the way I looked at it. Uh, Mike, how important was uh, the two attempts for Brandon and, and especially the second one that went through? Yeah, definitely. He was trying to, you know, um, you know, the first one, I just he just pulled it a little bit, and, and that's you know, I was so happy, and that's why we did what we did on the third down to give him another shot there because, you know, he, he has shown that he can do it, and you, you just want to get those live reps. So, um, but, yeah, he, you know, as soon as the ball left his foot, you knew it was good. So uh, I thought he had a nice night. Well, Mike, you mentioned tough 72 hours coming up. Do you think tonight you saw everything you need to see from the younger players to help make those decisions? Oh, I, I think so. I mean, they, they they definitely poured it out there for us. You know, they did. Um, I'm, I'm anticipating the video is going to be really good. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we definitely, you know, because, you know, it's, and I, I know you probably tired of me saying this, but it's really about the 68 players. I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm just so hopeful we can get we can get all these guys back. Okay. Right, follow up on Aubrey a little bit. Just are you much more comfortable with him going into the regular season now than what you were early in camp? Have you seen him do the things you wanted him to? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think that's understandable. Um, you know, and if I was to be critical, I, you know, I wish I'd have got him some more opportunities. You know, okay, um, coach. In the first two games, but that's why it was important to give him give him a couple cracks from 
from deep tonight. So Shoot, you nailed that 59er, man. That goes a long way with us. Man. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy after a 31-16 Cowboys win over the Raiders tonight. Zach Wolchuk hanging out with Brian Roddis from the Miller Light Club here, the official postgame show of your Dallas Cowboys. We got Dak Prescott audio after he made his play-calling debut. We'll hear from Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones regarding the Trey Lance trade. Brad Sham, pr plenty to break down from this one. You're listening to the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. All right, so with that being said, man, I'm waiting on the uh, Dak Prescott interview to uh, jump in, but I'm going to give you guys my analysis of, of, of what Mike McCarthy was saying with the uh, kicker. Look here, um, I, I've, I've kind of made this – I kind of, I kind of made this like this, and, and, and I think I saw a super chat, and we will try to read over those before I go into this. LDTV says, uh, "Law, did you see Josh Ball get dogged out? Cut him." Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch it, man. Some of you guys got a chance to uh, rewind and watch it. Uh, I think that the Cowboys they they kind of admire Josh, you know, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna rewatch this, man, and uh, go over everything and see what will happen to Josh Ball. Uh, and I thank you for your support. We got Wolf Mother JC says uh, Bax will be Paula Rico, same type Duke Hunter, Lukey or Lipke. I, I don't know how you say it. Why not keep the unknowns? Seems like the perfect situation. Develop the guys with the most situational potentials. Yeah, all of those backs, man, and. Uh, one of the things that, that that we kind of look at it, and I appreciate you for your twenty dollars support. When we look at this running back, and we look at the room in general, and we start to think about how this team is going to try to run, I want to try to keep most of the things or not everything the same. I want when Tony Pollard get his fourteen to fifteen touches, which I want to keep him there. The law of diminishing rates of return are heavy upon Pollard once he gets over 15. Remember, the magical number for Ezekiel was 25. So I'm thinking the magical number for Tony is 14 to 15 touches. So if I can get six or seven touches from Deuce, if I can get six or seven touches or maybe 10 from Rico, that will be a plus for us. And then on short yardages, that's why it, this game was so important. I'm going to go back and I'm going to chop up all of Hunter's tape. And I'm going to put that out there for us to go over and really dive deep into. Because Hunter gave me hope. He gave me hope. Down inside. Playing in that role. Playing the position to understand to you guys that he can catch out of the backfield. He can be your lead blocker. He is nasty if he needs to get one to two yards if it's fourth and short. And I get it. I get it. That was the Raiders' first, uh, second team, third team. But there are some things that you can still see that can translate. And I'm thinking that if I'm looking at Hunter, size is size, and that's what he brings to the table. You should bubble wrap before he has torn his ACL. This is from Jason Winfro. Yeah, I feel you, man. Uh, you should bubble wrap it. You know, you're talking about um, uh, Tony Pollard, right? No, not, not Tony Pollard. Uh, you should have bubble wrapped before he had torn his ACL. Are you talking about Stephen Jones? Let's see if the audio back. Luxury Hotel. Uh, he's still on commercial break. All right, uh, let's go. Uh, I got my guy Chris, the YouTube critic. Play calling for Dak today will help him with situational game management. Seeing the from the outside in. Yeah, I mean, we all do that, right? We all do that, and I'm quite sure that this wasn't his first rodeo doing this uh, type of thing. But I appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. All right, so, so back to the kicker on what – coach was saying coach basically was saying this right here ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and everyone that's listening that he should have gave brandon aubrey more and more chances but i'm thinking that the chances that he took today was pretty good he missed the kick and it's nothing like seeing someone miss something to come back and catch up 
pocket every yes. time. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, he drops it 15 yards back. When he panics, he goes backwards. Right. And so I thought he improved that tonight. He was doing more to kind of, you know, get to the sideline, scramble, step up in the pocket, do some different things. All right, so basically they're still talking. So when, when we start talking about my guy being able to fall off the horse and to ultimately get back on the horse, shoo. Uh, Harris says we're keeping four RBEs law. In 2016, we kept six RBEs. Oh, you're talking about Overshaw ran four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I saw Flash this morning. So if if he didn't hurt it that that game, he'll hurt it the next game. You know, it, it, it was just already written that he was going to have this ACL thing. I think you can't prevent injuries. You just got to, you know, you, you, you can try to manage it, but it was his time to get hurt. You know, it was just his time, bro. Uh, we, we Look, football is a, is a collision sport. And he collided. Uh, we can we can all say on that particular field, maybe we don't want to play uh, guys anymore in Seattle, but that's just how it goes. Uh, so Harris says, are we keeping four running backs? All right, Pollard, Pollard one, Rico two, Deuce three, Hunter Lupke is your fullback. That's just how it goes. That's how it goes, uh, unfortunately, fortunately. Uh, I, I got to make – Hunter played too well tonight. Hunter played too well tonight for you to bench him. Or you know, and, and I mean, just just if you said, him, okay, you, let's, let's put the scouting reports up on the board. Yeah. Who are you going to take? You're going to take Trey Lance. And, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, took a, they took a shot at adding a quarterback who they think the world of. You know, and like I said, if Will Greer has played to the level like he played – Tonight, you know, maybe you're not in that situation where you're thinking, "Wow, we need to do something different at quarterback." If we're gonna, if we're gonna carry a third, you know, let's go out and get this guy. You know, if they, if, if that's yeah. a, you know, so to me, it's it, we can be sad and and depressed and all that and feel bad for Will Greer, but you also are in a situation where you're trying to make your roster better. You know, and yeah. and I and I and I know it sounds cold and awful and all those things, and yeah, the guy was a friend and a team, but this happens. It happens in the National Football League. Guys get you know, guys get taken on and off rosters all the time. Yeah, and, and I totally understand that, and, and it is a business, and that's what guys will routinely say in there about anything that, that, like, that's how they try to you know rationalize it a little bit. As they say it's a business. I understand that. Can't get too emotional about it. I will say, if there's a time to, to, to observe the emotion or, or to meditate on it for a moment, tonight's the night. It's the locker room after the final preseason game. Like, real football starts tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of guys in sure. that locker room that aren't going to be here anymore. Sure, sure. No doubt. Uh, the, the, the massive cut down is on the 29th. And it's going to be like preseason. It's going to be like draft day all over again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I would say this, though. 31 other teams got their version of Will Greer to them, right? 31 other teams got their version of a running back like a Malik Davis. 31 other teams got high hopes to to their version of Dennis Houston, uh, to the Tyron Johnsons of the worlds, and of of anybody, like the Isaiah Land and, and Tyrus Wheat, right? So that's just the reality of it. So combing through this, it's a job that I'm glad that I don't have. And the Cowboys making the exertions to go out there and grab a, a, a Trey Lance is, is, is heavy upside. I don't foresee why anybody, anybody would look back at this and say to themselves that that that, that was a horrid situation to take an investment on a guy who was drafted in the first round, who who was a starter last year, won a starter role last year for the 49ers, got hurt, got hurt. And they had a guy that was drafted, Mr. Irrelevant, to step in and stood tall, took that team to the playoffs or what have you, got knocked out of the playoffs, 
right? And they made acquisition for Sam Darnold, right, who was another former first-round draft pick. Let me know if he was drafted in the first round. And Sam Darnold did these things before. He electric for the Panthers for all the way up until week four until they seen the Dallas Cowboys and he fell off the face of this earth. So Sam Donald is not chopped liver. And you coming off of an injury and people are already whispering, already whispering, hey, Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy, Sam Donald, Sam Donald. So he didn't have a good fighting chance at all. And I'm not placating to say that Lance don't have nothing to work on. He got plenty of things to work on. But the upside is tremendous. And you only lose in the fourth round draft pick. And you're paying the man $940,000, man. Come on, man. Come on. That's, that's peanuts. How the team feels about the Trey Lance move. I know you got to talk with Dak, and we'll play his reaction a little bit later. I'll be interested in what you guys think about how, how Dak talked. Dak is who I heard, um, and then I, I went and was starting to edit. Um, so Dak was the only one that I really heard talk. I don't know if it's just the emotion of Will Greer, or maybe it is the fact of the trade itself. Quarterback was a little, maybe, maybe a little chilly is, is the word. Oh. Just just sounded a little, it didn't sound as, as upbeat as normal. It just sounded a little more business tonight. Bobby, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you so much for your hard work. Uh, but we've got the voice of the Cowboys, Brad Sham, standing by ready. All right. The, I love you all. The love you more. There he is. Brad Bobby Sham. Belt, our Cowboys insider. That's what I wanted to you can to catch hear. him uh, mornings with Shout Sean and RJ as well on the man. flagship. 105.3 The Fan as we get ready to set uh, and talk with the voice of your Dallas Cowboys, the great Brad Shim, following a 31-16 Cowboys win over the Raiders as they wrap up the preseason, get ready for Sunday Night Football, the opener against the Giants. Brad, uh, what, what was your take on Will Greer tonight? I know afterwards, the mental toughness. I thought he had a stunning performance, great audition for the other 31 teams, but you know the situation that was rather shocking for the team, it sounds like, and everybody, we didn't see the Trey Lance move coming. No, I don't think anybody did, and uh, I mean, it really didn't happen. It didn't start to come together till Thursday, and um, I, I saw him in there briefly, and I just said, I've just got so much respect for you, because that can't have been easy. The, the, he knew, certainly yesterday, that um, they'd made the deal for Lance, so obviously there wasn't any room for him, and by the way, please go out and play this last game. Yeah. And and uh, he had time to, as Mike McCarthy said before the game, he had time to process it. Yeah. And because he, and I think this will help him almost as much as the physical performance. Teams will look at it and they'll say, look at the maturity of the young man. He embraced the opportunity. He went yeah. out and did everything he possibly could. He played extremely well. He didn't make any bad decisions. He didn't make any risky decisions. And I think he understood that that this was his audition, and I, and I said during the game, Zach, there are absolutely teams with third quarterbacks worse than him, and there are some teams with second quarterbacks mm -hmm. worse than him. I'd be very surprised if by Wednesday he didn't have a job. Felt like that Will Greer, as well as he played, had some help tonight, and I felt mm -hmm. like he had some help in the form of an offensive line that for the last three weeks have earned their letter jackets. These guys have played a lot of snaps. And I felt like tonight was the best that we've seen this Cowboys offensive line, the young backup, second, third type of unit players. Am I off on that, or is that, uh, is well, that something else? Well, there? I don't think you're off. And as you and I always like to do, we'll go back and look at the tape. But yep. I certainly thought that uh, – in the last two weeks, Farniak at center, and and uh, although they did, I guess they started him at left guard. Started him at guard tonight, yeah. But, uh, I, I mean, I think he's improved his play. I'm not trying to make him John Hanna or anything, no, but he's, no. I think he's improved his play a little bit. Go I think, uh, you know, it's too bad that Ball got hurt. But uh, there's something to bass, <laughs> and, and yeah. I don't know the way people <laughs> <laughs> don't have enough offensive linemen if you can afford not to waive him, I might just keep him. He's got, he's got the, an, an unusual skill set. He can do a little guard and tackle. No doubt. Uh, awesome Richards, I think, is a guy, Brian, who's gotten better from week one. You know, he practiced at guard all summer, as you right. know. Then they come up with an injury in that game it. here two that weeks tackle. ago. 
and just bounced back out and played tackle, and he did. And he wasn't great, but he wasn't awful. And he got better over the three weeks, I thought. Now, are you ready to say he's your swing tackle? I don't know. But I'll guarantee you there are people playing with worse Mm -hmm. than that. Uh, So I do think it's fair to say that that Greer had some help. You know, I – I try to watch a quarterback's feet when I can. Sure. His were quiet for yes. the most part. Yeah. And quiet feet is partly an attribute of a quarterback and partly a sign of an offensive line that's allowing him to play uh, with some peace. But I thought what you were going to say when you said he got some help was he also got some help from his play caller. Yes, he did. Because Dak Prescott <laughs> fell in love with those bootlegs in the first half, <laughs> yeah. and they worked. They that's did. That's a staple of preseason football. That's a simple That's a simple play call right there. Can I, Okay, with, the, with the, the offensive line situation, though, is like I've got Bass like at six, Awesome Richards at seven. How many of these guys am I going to keep? Am I going to go, is Brad Sham going to go and try and claim one? Or trade for one, so, or are you gonna, or are you just gonna, are you gonna keep nine or ten, and is your last one a guy that's not even here? Possibly, and I, you always want to see what's on the waiver wire. Yep. But as you know better than I do, uh, the teams are not. I think I added this to a tweet of yours today. Yeah. The, the offensive linemen are like pitchers. There aren't enough. Not of enough them. of them, right? And so people are not giving away offensive linemen. No, they're not now. Sometimes you, you might have someone who's got an extra one, and you see something, and your offensive line coach says, I think we can work with that guy and make him into something. So there, there are surprises that will pop up on Tuesday. But I think one of the things that's incumbent on them is to say, where, if at all, do we have a surplus that could we you could trade, trade? Will for an offensive lineman? Uh, hmm. Well, you can't now, can you? Uh, you have to cut down on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, you're going to have to cut. I don't. I don't think you could. You don't think you could trade him you for maybe? Well, n- no. If you're in, if you're the other team, are you giving up an offensive? You, you know, you're going to get him on the open. He's going to be on the open market Tuesday. Why would you give anything up for him? Well, maybe you don't want to. Maybe you don't want to compete with yeah, the other teams for him. Well, yeah. I mean, that's always a possibility, sure. but that that's a little risky. Uh, you gamble I, for that. I hesitate to say anything out loud because it sounds like I know something and I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> but I just Sergeant look Schultz at some, over here. I just look at some. <laughs> where where do they have a surplus of good players? Secondary. Yep. Maybe. Yep. Receiver. Defensive line. Maybe. Maybe. Not line. Uh, if edge, you have, you got you got a high if end. You on have. Edge. Now you're acting like you do know something. No, I don't. I swear, I'm just making it up in my head. Okay, but you're doing a good job of making let, it let up. Me, let me, if let me, if let me you have, where do we have surplus at Cowboy Nation? Where do we have a spot where we can trade away before massive cut day to get somebody so we don't have to compete for waivers? Where do we have uh, a, a surplus at? I, I would say. Edges, man. Uh, well, well, with the thing with Sam Williams now, you know, you don't know what the NFL is going to do. And um, I, I'm saying you got Fowler, you got Armstrong, you got you got Land now, and, and Land is a very much so unknown commodity, right? Or in Tyrus Wheat. So you got some, and those guys you can pretty much cut and get away. Uh, Native Texan says tight ends and edges, yo. You know, because here, here's what I'm doing right here. I'm looking at this team. I would sacrifice. I would sacrifice Sean McEwen to keep Hunter, though. You know, even though some people may say they a law, you can't go off of this last preseason game and bet your house on that. You know, uh, interior over edges. I, I don't think that we got enough push on the interior to play around with it. Now, uh, I've seen some people say, well, we should trade for a linebacker. No, we play a lot of nickel. So that's going to be a low position of value for us because from, from what I can see, it's going to be a lot of LVE and a lot of Damone Clark in games. You know, that's just how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Let's listen back to these boys. They're doing a great job on 105.3 The Fan. Appreciate, pre, appreciate those boys. Be sure to uh, hit the like and follow on their website. Many times. You know, what do you, how many receivers are you keeping? And yeah. then we talk about it in the pregame show. And so yeah. one of the things I have to answer is 
how many receivers, how many backs, how many tight ends, and it's exacerbated now. The difficulty of the problem is 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 made more urgent by the fact that they have to keep three quarterbacks. Greer was someone you could release. You didn't have to expose him to waivers. Mm -hmm. So they'll do that. I'm sure they'll do. I say I'm sure. I'll be surprised if they don't do what they've done in years past. You know, you look at the release sheet on CJ Goodwin. Yeah, I bet you, Goodwin, I bet the long, long snapper, snapper the, yeah, Goodwin, the, kicker, the butter. Yeah. 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 So, and then you say, what? But then what you don't understand is <laughs> they bring you, them back. You don't have to wave them. Right. You release them. You'll say, right. just stick around. We're going to sign you back tomorrow. Right. And then somebody else goes on IR, and now you've got that spot. Plus, you now have the practice squad elevations. So you've got three Practice different uh, ele elevations uh, for each of two players a week. So you can play with that for six weeks. Yeah. And they did it last year with Cooper Rush right. and Brett yeah. Maher at the beginning of the year. Yep, so I think no they were going to do that with Greer. Well, they can't do that with Lance. Yeah. So they're going to have to keep three on the roster. And the whole conversation about Lance is so interesting because – We'll see what he is down the road, but that, that's that's two years away. Right. But if heaven forfend, if you have two quarterbacks get hurt in a game, you'd rather bring in Will Greer than Trey Lance right now. I guarantee you. Sure. Now, now Lance Just might right be a now, better yeah. prospect, yeah. but for right now, for yeah. this year. Yeah. Now, one thing that might happen, or at least you can envision the possibility, okay. is that since – They'll probably have to activate three. Well, uh, yeah, because if you if you make the third quarterback a guy you activate in emergency, you can't use him earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. But if you make him just one of your players and right. have seven other guys inactive, then if they want to do what San Francisco did with Lance early in his career, put in a an option package at the sure. goal line for him, then you could do that. I mean, that's way down the road. Yep. But, I mean, there's no question that he's a great prospect, and, and I thought Jerry Jones made himself very clear. We've always been looking for a developmental quarterback that we didn't have to uh, mortgage the future for. But in the short term, he's oh, just... Oh, he's made a living doing this. Yeah. yeah. Getting but, Tony <laughs> Romo for extra money after the draft. But, but, he, and... but, but, but Trey Lance is not as good a quarterback as Will Greer today. No. So that's a, that is a... In he, the Cowboys system. In system, in you any system, get, you got wait a minute. Trey now. Lance today, today, hey, Brad, did Brad, Will Greer on, light man. you up? There, there's no, questions. No, I, I, the, I, the, the reason, the right. reason, Tom Brady. the reason you go, hey, you, Brad, if, if on, Will man. Greer had shown even a, even a little bit of this, what we saw today, do they go get Trey Lance? Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Because I think they look at Greer as someone much closer to his ceiling, right? Than Lance, who was, after all, the third pick in the draft. Sure. So that's a guy you're going to develop for two years and expose him to Dak and go in and learn. And yeah. I mean, the poor kid's had, you know, his injury history. Is just oh, no, that's that's the one thing that's big, the biggest downfall for the kid. Well, as we talk quarterbacks, and, and hopefully hey, you haven't bro, heard enough on, from this individual dog. tonight, Brad, but we got a special guest, Babe Loffenberg, on the phone that wants oh, to chime fantastic. in in the conversation. Oh, babe, man. I know you've been listening. What are your thoughts on what we've been chatting we'll hear about? What Babe's saying. And then we're uh, guys, do. hello. I will tell you, I kind of just got into the car, so oh, I may have missed press some interview. of it. Well, I obviously missed some of it. Brad, hello. You miss me? <laughs> Desperately, babe. De you know, here's the problem. Our boss, Tim Collins, is sitting right here. If he likes the way that you sound, you may be invited to come do this live after the game with me. Okay, I got to go right now. Yeah, Have sorry. Good night, yeah. everybody. No. Thank you, babe. Okay. Did, did Will Greer make himself a tradable commodity tonight? I mean, in addition to what he's done in the well, past. Yeah, Bri Brian just asked that, but I, my answer to that is, if you're another team, right? why would you trade anything of value when you know he's going to be on the street in two days? Because you don't know that you're going to get him. Yes. If I wanted to assure that I'm going to get Will Greer, I've got to trade for him. Well, then then, that's, then that I was exactly Brian's point. And so the answer to your question is maybe. Babe, feel free to call in any time. <laughs> man, no doubt, no doubt, man. So... I don't think that that is an option that's workable, Cowboy Nation. Call my phone, hit my line. Only once but for sake of time.
657 is the hotline. I want to know what's on your mind. Yeah, we, we heard what they had to say. We heard what they wanted to talk about. But I want to know what's on your heart. There is one other participant to the conference. Watch it, you go. All participants are muted. Mopping with my brothers, there's no question. Keep it real. Keep it real, baby. That's all we ask. I got my guy for the 803. Coach Marv, you're live on the nation. Talk to me. Coach. Coach Marv. We'll we'll circle back to Coach Marv, man. All right, Mark, that drive trucks, man. You live, man, for the 832, man. You live on the nation. (laughs) Hey, what's up, Marl? What's, oh, what's up, up, man? What's, what's up? Season? Man, man, doing well, man. We 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 popping champagne bottles over here. We won a, we won a preseason game. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Hey, man, that, that Jack taste that that Jack tasted good tonight. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. That Jack, that Jack was bounce smooth, my friend tonight. It wasn't no what weak spots. You know it wasn't no weak spots in the play calling today, you know. <laughs> no, that's that's not you know what? It's an interesting thing and I and I like the fact that all this is is Dak being coached. A lot of this is Dak being coached, probably for the first time in about five or six years. Yeah. And that's, that is just, again, Mike McCarthy knows more than anybody else here that think, knows more than, than people here think they do. Right. Whatever you want to, whatever you're thinking about Mike McCarthy, he ain't this and he ain't that. Mike McCarthy's been around. Right. And he's done, done some things and he's seen things. Yeah. That's why from the jump. He said he wanted Dak hands on the offense. Yeah. They're going to set things up. But that's going to be the guy making the decisions nine times out of ten. I mean, shoot. And this is just an extension it. of that. This is just an extension of that with him calling these plays. Now, again, we kind of got to couch some of this excitement yep. because, again, this was second, third team squads. But when was the last time our offense in the preseason with, with, with backups and backup to the backup looked this smooth? I mean, it's been a minute, man. Uh, we don't normally score that many points in preseason game. We kind of look kind of sloppy, you know. So so this game was more uh, polished. I, I was sitting there like, man, at one point, let Parsons call the defensive play. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not, like, dog? Again, you know? Yeah, why not? Yeah, you need, you, it, this is about decision making. you got to have smart players. And, you know, I didn't say much about the train last night because, you know, people overreacting to that. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, people overreact to that. That's not what people want it to be. Uh, Trey Lance needs to learn how to process things. If he need, and he's still a young cat, uh, football wise, not age wise, football wise. Trey Lance ain't played a lot of football anywhere. Yeah, a lot of football, yeah. So he's got to learn how to process information. That's why. That's why they, you know, moved him around to San Francisco. I believe. You know, it, it, he wasn't picking up things. They wasn't gonna do a whole lot to help him. He just wasn't picking up things. So he's got to learn how to process things. What it is tonight is Dak, Dak is smarter than people have ever given him credit for here. Man, you know, nobody it's, it's how I'm going to say this, no. though. I'm never going to get mad at somebody purchasing life insurance, right? And whatever the right. premium right. No, is, no. Exactly. hey, they, that's, that's what Jerry did. He purchased some life insurance. <laughs> exactly. If things don't go right with this, with this, with this, with this um, renegotiating that contract, or they just tired of him or whatever, they want to move on this business. I get that. Nope. They'll yep. take they they take their chance with Trey Man. That's a business move, and if that's what they want to do, they can do it. Man. They want to. They, they ain't holding. That's not holding that. Oh, they're not holding that over that head or nothing. No they just making bro. sure we got an option. No it's doubt, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, Mark, man. Good good <laughs> conversation for the nation, man. Look, guys, I would never get mad at the Cowboys making a decision like that. I mean, we're giving up a fourth. I know the four ladder, the three ladder network. They're gonna hate regardless. They're gonna look, it uh, they could have the Cowboys could have had some breaking news and signed me. You know what I'm saying? And they'd be like, hey man, that law shoe. He don't never sleep, man. He might get, he might put a little pressure on Dak, man. Dak, you better watch out, man. That laudation coming, dog. You know, he coming, you know, and he ain't going to let up. He relentless with his approach. So the four-ladder, three-ladder network going to do their job, right? I just want you guys to understand that if Trey Lance was healthy against the Eagles last year, if it was him out there juxtaposed to a Josh Johnson, 
I'm for sure to think that the Niners would have beat the doggone Eagles and they would have been in the Super Bowl. I'm to that level of thinking. But he wasn't healthy. Brock Purdy got hurt. And I can I don't want to foresee anything like that happening to us that we fool around and get to the doggone playoff game. That go down. Cooper Rush goes down. And now you know you got somebody in there that don't know how to hit water if they fell off a boat. And we were sitting here shopping around trying to scoop up some stuff. But if you put Trey Lance in, and he may just be able to be the same type of quarterback Dak is. Under all of the offseason, on all of the training during the season of picking up the playbook and picking up and learning behind Dak, that could work just for us, right? So it's just what it is. Uh, Cowboy Nation, I got the next caller, Coach Marv, live on the nation. And it could not just be for this year. It could be next year. It could be anywhere down the line for us. 803, Marv, you're live. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lord. I had you on mute, man, because I put you on mute when I, when I called in. No and doubt. I ain't know it was on me, man. You but it's always good. great. To, it's always great out any type of victory, man. Because victory, um, regardless of what people talk about preseason, you want you want winners to be a habit, and that's good. That's always you want to be, regardless of what the circumstances. Yeah. Um, want to talk to you about uh about this roster first. Let me give my present. I know you ain't talking to me uh about the Trey Lance thing. Right, 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 right. Listen, Trey Lance is a developmental guy. Yes, he was a third pick in the draft, but we have seen guys that were third pick in the draft that never become good quarterbacks. That's A. Um, San Francisco didn't trade him about – they watch him every day. They watch him every day, and they just didn't think he was going to be able to, to move forward. So that's, that's just the, the bottom line there. And I'm not saying he can't, and I'm not saying he can't develop, but it's going to take some time for him to develop because Sam Donald was a what? First round draft third, pick too. Third yeah. pick. If he been around, there's, there's a lot of guys. Who come G- to G- Gino, Gino Smith. Pick. Gino Smith was drafted in the earlier rounds. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of guys, and then yeah. you got some guys that may take a little while longer to develop and to come about. So yes, the Cowboys are taking a, 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 a fly on this, and they're gonna work with him. But right now, we, in the now. He's not going to help us this year. It, it it may be next year, but right now we need to focus on those two guys we got, and we're going to go on a roll with those guys, the Dak Prescott and Cooper Rush. Okay, that's just my opinion on, on Trey Lance thing. Um, let's talk about some of the guys you talked about quick. Uh, Hunter Lindsay will make it through uh, waivers, uh, and you can you can do that yo-yo thing, and he will probably be a, a, a part of this team. If you get some bumps and bruises and you need them to come in for a game here and there, they'll bring it back and forth. I just, I just, I just, this, Mike McCarthy said something very important that I think people need to listen. It's not about the 53. It's about the six. It, it takes about 70 players for you to make it through a season. I know we talk about the practice squad, but the practice squad is very utilized for bringing guys up. Look at all the guys that they brought up that, that played some snaps back down, back up, back down. So it's really important that they want to keep six to eight of their guys either way that they can try to keep them. Um, offensive linemen, I do not understand why these why these people are still talking about. Yes, this offensive line is young. Yep. But I've been I've been around football a long time. This offensive line is not bad. It's these not. backups are not bad. They're not having because they may miss a block here and there. Your starters are gonna miss a block here and there. These awesome look good really today, though, man. Them. God, dog, awesome look good, man. Awesome look good, and when and, and coming in there for being hurt, Lewesco had had a pretty good game, like he, he had in game one of the preseason, and then he had a bad game. Yeah, now Ball had a tougher time at at tackle. He is not a tackle. They tried him back at tackle. That's not his thing because his right. speed is not good. He's not a tackle, but he plays better at guard. That's where his home is at. Bass played good. Awesome played good. You probably going to need some of these guys this season. But when you put a guy that got talent around two good guys, he's going to even play even better. Yeah. So that's the thing where they're going. They're going with 10. Um, Land, I, again, like we were talking about Land one time before, 
he will make it through waivers. Yeah, he will. He, will he, he kind of like fizzled, fizzled out a little bit. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think you can sneak him. Yeah. So if Ball, they say Ball had a, a little hip thing going on. If Ball hip thing is uh, a little, you know, maybe where he may not be there week one, and even though he's a backup, he may make the team. But they made to put him on IR for four games so they can add another guy in there. And when somebody Man, else might get coach, hurt in the first four weeks, I, I, I like seventy-two. I like seventy-two. Uh, he would be my guy over ball. Seventy-two. Whoever seventy-two is, I like that guy. I like that kid. I, 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 I like him, but I don't. I, for, for me, yes, he has flashes, but ball is a better player than he is. Oh, you think ball is better than 72? I think we see flashes, but a little bit of play in and play out. Uh-huh. Ball did bad in this preseason. He played better at guard. I didn't see two where he had a, a big hiccup, but I think we just going on on, on what, we, what we think of ball. But guard, I challenge anybody that watched play after play, and we would say, no, he, didn't, he don't look bad. He is better at guard. But at Tycho, he's not the answer. The West Coast is your answer there. They're going back up on right side, back up on left side. I like what they got. And if they want somebody to get hurt, one of these guys can step in, and I think they'll be very good because they have talent. And you put them one guy, and you put them beside the other guy, and you know his skill set, you can still make this work. And kudos to Dak Prescott for, calling uh, for doing men. that. <laughs> he said the truth. Hey. You said the trend where you're going to see a lot of yeah. quarterbacks back and quarterbacks within the preseason. They're going to see if they can uh, get the playbook and be the offensive coordinator for that day. And that is a that was a great thing for Dak Prescott. But again, just be be mindful of where we at now, and 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 let's focus on now and these next seventeen. No what doubt, goes Coach on next year, years, We we, we appreciate you, Coach. Man, I thank you so much for calling in, man, with your insights to the game. We appreciate you. That's Coach Marv, y'all. We appreciate you, man. That's a good call from him. Uh, so so basically, we're going to have to do a lot of research on these uh, offensive line, but we haven't still seen our starting five. We probably the only team in the National Football League that didn't see Tyron Tyler Tyler, Zach Martin, and Terrence Steele all on the field at the same time. Let me repeat. We the only team in the National Football League that didn't see Tyron Tyler, Tyler, Zach Martin, and Terrence Steele all on the field at the same time. So in two weeks from here, it'll be an element of surprise for us. We will see if these boys are ready. Um, But we do know for sure, awesome, TJ Bash, uh, who else is kind of Matt? Well, let's go. Those three guys right there, they gave us a little, okay, hey, you know. Um, and then they was talking about on 105, um, what you do with Farniak and those boys, Alex Lindstrom. I think you can live without Alex Lindstrom. The other Alex that I was saying, number 72, and uh, Earl Bostic, those two boys, they, they gave us a little something. And uh, we will see, man, how the tape goes from here. I got uh, – this is from Miles. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miles, you're live, man. I, don't, I can't even see your number there. But, Miles, you're live on the nation. How you doing, Lyle? What's going on, man? Man, I'm doing great, man. Talk to me, man. I got to just tell you, man, I'm just – I was so happy to see those um, diamond chains and all that they – they did, they did kind of hide them tonight. They tried to come out and play a little bit, at least yeah. we could see what what our team can do a little bit. You a know what bit. I mean? Yeah. But we got the we 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 doing everything because I just feel and I'm a die hard Dallas Cowboy fan, and if we don't get rid of Dak Prescott, we not gonna win no Super Bowl. And they done figured out the whole formula because we definitely can trade Dak Prescott for one of the best linebackers in the league right now today. And if we put the best linebacker with that defense with Michael Parsons, we got Lawrence, we got Curse, we got Dick, and we got oh man. Wait All that money we we got to pay a quarterback fifty two million when we can pay that defense, we can get three good defensive players 
for what, one quarterback. What, what linebacker are you saying? And that got that got a no trade clause, by the way, on his contract. Uh, but but you know, what no, linebacker no, are you, you saying? You got to understand what a trade clause means, though. Now you got to understand what a trade the a trade clause is. I just can't send you away, but I can send you somewhere you want to go. And he gonna say, so "I want to stay here in Dallas." Why would he uproot himself to go anywhere? Onto well, any he better team do what he got to do this year, man. If he don't do what he got to do this year, guess what? And, but, we, hold on. Give me, right the linebacker, give me the linebacker you are saying. Oh, look, I tell you like this right now. One of the best linebackers you can get right now is that guy that played with Chicago. They trade him to Baltimore. <laughs> You can do a three. Look, you can get Smith. You can't get Smith. You can do a three team trade. I'm telling you, you can get Smith. You can do a three team trade. But oh my you God! Send, you so you try to tell me that the Baltimore you Ravens? You gotta send back to the Tennessee Titans. Hey, hey. You gotta send back to the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> You must be out of your goddamn mind. Oh, my gosh, man. Hey, I thought comedy season was on another show. I didn't know that it was comedy hours, Miles. Come oh, on, man. You can man. call it comedy. Oh, I tell you what. You find me the best linebacker. Here, you find oh, me the my. best linebacker in the NFL, and we put him on that defense. Hey, we can even, take any rookie quarterback to the Super Bowl. That's not an eye for an eye, fam. Come on, linebackers Come on, are the you, lowest you, position. So if he's not the oh, best, my. You tell me who the best linebacker in the NFL right now. It's not going to be Dak Worthy trade, dog. Come on, man. It is a Dak Worthy oh trade. Oh, my they goodness, need a quarterback man. Why like would that. put it like this? The, 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 the analogy idea, that you made, number, that, means, that, means that, the, that means he's that the that means the Baltimore talk, Ravens will trade Roquan Smith we gotta walk for it. Dak Prescott, we gotta and walk. they will have Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott on their team. Come on, no, man. We got to do a three-deal trade. We got to. See, Baltimore needs somebody from the Tennessee Titans. We got to send that to the Tennessee Titans Man. to get <laughs> – <laughs> we we got to send them to the Tennessee Titans to get the linebacker. Now, so the cocaine's now, happening. When does that deal, crack man, come get, into play You can get the best you. linebacker and can't nobody mess with our defense. We can take Cooper Rush to the Super Bowl. Just <laughs> come on, man. I had to let you go, man. You went over your time, house. Oh, my goodness, man. I never, ever thought that I would hear a person put together a conversation to get me near the ropes and say, hey, and then he, I, I thought he was going somewhere with it, but come on, you try to tell me. <laughs> I know people hate Dak Prescott, but come on, man. I don't even think that the haters of Dak Prescott would say, give me Roquan Smith <laughs> over Dak. And, and even the, the, the Baltimore Ravens, to that degree, would say to themselves, what would they do with Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott? <laughs> I know you're talking about a three-way trade like this basketball, but it's not for him. Ocean Springs, man, come on, save a brother over here, man. I can't make this stuff up, man. You're live on the nation. Talk to me, man. Talk to me, man. Law, this is Jay from Ocean Springs. Oh, Jay, man, talk to me, man. This guy that made me lose my whole teddy talk. <laughs> <laughs> I want and for a minute I'm listening to the last caller. For a minute yeah, I'm yeah. just asking myself, is law being punked? Are we being oh, punked? Are we getting trolled we over here, man? Punked. We <laughs> bruh, why would you go on the internet and make yourself sound like the most idiotic person on the face of God's green earth? This man said a three way Trade to send that press guy to Baltimore. And said that Dak Prescott will release his no trade clause for that. Right. Dak himself will leave right. his seat and say, you know what? I'll remove my trade clause and I'll go to the Ravens to compete with Lamar Jackson <laughs> or, or, or whatever Dak. the Tennessee. Uh, 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 right, come uh, uh, on, man. Law, <laughs> law, you need to do something you ain't did in a minute. You need to tell him. To lean forward. <laughs> I'll just To <laughs> <laughs> lean forward and look it. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Lean uh, God knew I needed lean that laugh, bro. Yeah, yeah, he needed to get slapped. But, but man. <laughs> hey, but, but, but seriously, because I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching. 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 I'm watching
<laughs> so, do what I'm going to say. I got three points. Three points, three points, three points. I mean, Dak showed me something, man. I'm excited that they have given him the keys to the offense. Yeah. They give them the key. Yeah. The restraints are taken off. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something, man. I saw a whole nother ceiling for that press stop, bro. Yeah. Whole nother ceiling. Uh, the second thing I want to say, I don't want us, I don't Cowboy Nation calm down about the offensive line because this is what I'm going to tell you. If you remember, two years ago, we was all getting that, going down Terrence Steele's throat because he was getting whooped left and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left yeah. and right. But they stuck with him. Still and they good. kept working with him, and look where he is today. They doing the same. We 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 work with our offensive line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the third thing that I wanted to say was, uh, man, I, I'm sorry, but I don't know if my chance. That dude, he, he messed me up. Yeah, man, he he tore he us up, up, man. I had, I had three points. Man, man, I had man. Three points. I, it is what it is, bro. Appreciate you for calling in, Chief, man. <laughs> they yeah, said man, they no said no Jerry problem, Jones man. on the horn. Let me see what he's talking about. Salute, bro. <laughs> That's a good call, man. Jay from Ocean Springs. All right, let's see what Jay. Guys, we were the first two preseason games. You didn't know where the ball was going to end up when he threw it. High, wide. But he did play well tonight. But I am for the move of going to get a Trey Lance. Will Greer's spot on Jerry the Jones. roster was not solidified. It was not. Not going into. No, 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 no. If people think the the third preseason game would you do that much for the quarterback, they, <laughs> they got to land on the moon for sale. I got my guy Fargo, man. You're live on the nation, man. Talk to me, man. Man, Law, so uh, we're going to move from comedy hour to confessions, <laughs> if it's okay with you. Yeah, man, let's go with it. Man. So back when uh, Tom Brady was still playing for the Patriots and uh, the Eagles made it to the Super Bowl, I was uh, taking a plane to Chicago because I had to get my visa because I was teaching out in China. Mm. I had to go to the consulate in Chicago to get my visa re up. Right, right, right. So I'm in Chicago and – you know I got to fly back down to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. That's where my mom lives, Ferguson, Northside. You know, shouts out, rest in peace, Michael Brown. And um, so, of course, you know, it's it's the Super Bowl Sunday, so it snowed and all the flights at O'Hare are all canceled. So I hopped, you know, got on the blue line, go down to Roosevelt, get on to Quincy and all that. And, you know, got to the Amtrak station, went back to the cafe car, and there's three dudes in the cafe car. They're all watching the Super Bowl, and I'm sitting there like, well, go Eagles because – you know, I ain't with Tom Brady. Okay. So I just wanted to call and confess that. I Keep mean, it 100 with you because I was listening to Big Game James this morning. It was uh-huh. like, that's a friend of me. And I just wanted to know if I'm shame or no blame. So I'm just calling in on it. Oh, uh, man. Here, here's Where how... were you, Law, when you were watching it? Were, were, were you on the Patriots or the Eagles? How'd you feel? I, I was like, well, if the Eagles get one. At least I, I can say that, you know, all of the teams in our division got a ring, right? And we can take the lollipop right. off of the mem, right? And okay. then if the Bradys okay. get one, you know, I was like, damn, he's going to now have more rings than, than my team. You know what I'm saying? So I was right. kind of like torn. But the craziest thing of it all, two things happened. That sucker uh-huh. lost, right? For him oh, to go, with the Philly special. They yeah, got yeah, yeah. Him he good. lost, so the Eagles got their like ring. Magnolia wrapped up the right. whole perfect season, man. Right, right. Yeah. right. And then Brady the next year go go back or something like that. I'm sitting like, oh, God, dog. Yeah, so back, right? yeah, he went back. So I'm like, <laughs> damn, you know. I literally was like, damn. <laughs> so he got it, it anyway. Love, you know, but I was just like, I just, I just. I don't know, man. You know the spirit hits you, so uh, yeah. just wanted to call in and keep it, keep it, just, just, just leap. You know, brush my shoulders off. Preseason's over. We had in. We going for six. You know, DC for life. Let them hang. Let them hang. Let them hang. Yes, uh, indeed, man. To the window, to the wall. So, so, so that's that's my confession, right? There. It was like, all right, so little brother, big little brother, because the Eagles was started in nineteen twelve or something like that, whenever they was founded, but. In actuality, as a Cowboy fan, we was torn. We were literally torn, right? So in in relations, I was thinking, too, that, like, shoot, Brady, he suck against NFC East team. Eli spanked him. And the Giants, <laughs> Eli Giants spanked him, right? And now we had Nick Foles to spank him. In actuality, the only person who laid the egg against the Brady was Donovan McNabb, it just hit me, you know. 
But it, it is it's some strange multiverse. I'm quite sure that the Eagles, Donovan McNabb, beat Tom Brady that year. But it's just weird, man. So shout out to the Patriots and shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Shout out to also um, uh, Tom Brady for winning all of those Super Bowls. But here's the thing. I'm going to let the next caller on. The only problem with Eagles fans, even when you kind of give Eagles respect, they get mad. Last year we had Bird Game 31, and I was saying like, yeah, man, y'all got the third-ranked defense. And he's like, no, we don't have third-ranked defense. We got the number one defense. I'm like, whoa, 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 man. I pulled up the stat. It was third. Dog, hey, calm down. Chill out. Hey, man, don't, don't disrespect us. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I said, man, A.J. Brown, he doing, he all right. But, but, no, 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 A.J. Brown, the best wide receiver. So in every spot I was talking to Bird Game 31, he said that they got the best kicker, they got number one special teams, they got number one offense, number one defense. But they lost in the Super Bowl with a man with one leg. You know, they could with that number one pressure defense, they couldn't put a finger on Pat Mahomes, you know. So it was good. I was telling him, like, hey, chill out, calm down. But that's the only issue with Eagles fans, that even when you try to put the olive branch and give them a little something, like even when we say, hey, Jalen Hurts, he improved. He had a good season last year. Oh, Jalen Hurts better than that. Jalen Hurts better than that. I said, die, dog, bro. He had one good year, and now that trumps seven seasons of Dak Prescott. Come on. Last I checked, you got to, in order to be the man, you got to do what, y'all? Can y'all put that down in the chat? In order to be the man, you got to do what? Right, right, right. But all of a sudden, that trumps everything. Look, literally, what Jalen Hurts did in one season trumped all of the quarterbacks outside of Pat Mahomes. You know, that's how Eagle fans think. And if you really get them in a closed room, in a closed closet, well, you don't want to be in a closed closet with them. But if you get them by themselves, they will say, Jalen Hurts is better than Pat Mahomes. You know, they, they will literally say that Jalen Hurts is better than Pat Mahomes. A.J. Brown is better than Jamar Chase. A.J. Brown is better than, than – than, you can't get them to say that A.J. Brown is not better than another wide receiver. You can't get them to say that another DB is not better than Darius Slay. Slay can get caught on by a 30-yard. It wasn't his fault. It was the cheerleader who was gyrating on the sideline. I can't make this stuff up, you know. Yeah, look at Lil Dallas. You got him who's superimposing as a Cowboy fan that is a diehard Eagles fan to say, hey, Lil Dallas Cowboys say, hey, man, Dak Prescott had meteorological seasons. I can't make this stuff up. Speaking of that, I want Lady Jessica to get these boys in shape over here in the right way. <laughs> Lady, you're live on the nation. What's up, Law? What's up, everybody? I don't yeah. know what these folks smoking, Law. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he talking about, but Dak Prescott ain't going nowhere because, number one, like you say, it ain't no trade clause in this world. I don't know what he was talking about, but he should have just dropped off the phone. <laughs> but uh, I love the win. I'm looking forward for Dak, Dak to show what he can do on the bench teaching his other a person that back him up how to get the ball, how to win a game, how to do what he needs to do. All I got to say is y'all to see what that can do mm -hmm. all these years and all this hate. Y'all should be over that by now. Yeah. There ain't nobody got time for that, man. Get y'all mind right. If you don't like it, you, this team, you claim you've been a fan all these years and you try to lose, you ain't out there playing no football. You ain't out there running, uh, looking at no playbook and trying to come up with no game to uh, scheme to win the game. So you need to just chill out. Either you're going to be a fan or you ain't. Ain't nobody got time for y'all mess this year. Y'all do this every year, every offseason. Here y'all go with all this negative talk. We ain't got time for that, baby. It's time to put on y'all big girls and big boys uh, stuff and let's support our team or either get gone. Because, number one, Dak ain't going nowhere. He is our starting quarterback. So yes, all indeed. this hate y'all got towards this man, y'all need to get over it. And Romo ain't coming back. So quit talking about Romo in the chat. This Romo is in the booth watching and discussing football. Deal with it. Deal this with is it. Dak's team. This is our team now. How about them Cowboys? Let's go. If preseason is over with, now it's time to see all our boys and our new crew all together on the field running it up. 
I just yes, wanted them to run it up. Run, run it up. It up. We win, win. Yes, indeed, yes, Lady Jessica. Yes, indeed. Y'all heard what the lady said. She said what she said. And she said, how about them cowboys, by the way? So she was preaching the good word over there. She was giving us all type of good stuff and anointing with her voice and PVO, by the way. So we do like to hear this cowboy nation. I just want to say this, though. Um, <clears throat> and it's my last touch on the Eagles. Like I said, Hurts, phenomenal. He was the best quarterback in the NFC Last year, he was. All I'm saying, what Law is saying, is just repeating pour for four, right? Do it again. Let's see him do it again. That's all we're saying. And then we can start measuring, right? But it's too soon to measure the man. You know what I'm saying? It's too soon. I got from the 817. The conference has been locked. You're live on the nation. Talk to me. Yeah, how you doing, Law? How you doing today? Man, I'm doing well, what you doing? I'm doing good, man. I think the nation is doing good tonight. All right. Well, I just got two points okay. on that situation right here. If I don't disagree with them getting Trey Lance, but the whole point is, and I understand why it was a business situation. Right, I understand right, right, that. Right, right, right. But what I was thinking is why not they just try to get another offensive lineman because we're not that, that, that deep in the offensive lineman. If somebody goes down, you know what I'm saying, I, I like my boy Smith, but he's kind of fragile. You know what I'm saying? Who are you gonna put in over on that on that on that left side? You know what I'm saying? And and another thing, I learned a lot about that today. Mm -hmm. That I, didn't, I knew he was a good football player, but I didn't. His mind for the plan, for the way he see the field, had, he, that that got a breakout year this year. He, yeah. he, I really believe he he he's gonna elevate his game more so than when he was hurt. So and came back and proved everybody wrong. And I. All these people who say the Cowboy fans, I'm with, I'm with Jessica. All these all, I always got something to say about the team. If you don't like the team, don't don't root for them. Root why for why them. call yourself a Cowboy fan if you're gonna downrate your own man? I right. mean, right. I got my man. Where they where they one in fifteen or are they you know fifteen or eighteen and you know? mm -hmm. That's my team. Yep. Regardless, I'm gonna ride a dog on the day for six some odd years, and I'm always gonna be a Cowboy fan. And when I die, I'm gonna die in a in a cowboy coffin, you hear me? Because it's always Cowboy Nation. Thank you for your call. And let's go, Cowboy! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Man, that's the type of energy I like, man. Tap in with that type of energy. Yes, indeed. And and even, you know, some people got sons, daughters, you know, that, that that's inspired to sing. And all you can say is, <sighs> bless her poor little heart, you know. You ain't going to just tear her down, you know. You just bless her poor heart. Well, bless, man. You know, he trying to shoot. Let me just see if I can get him on the soccer field, man. I heard Messi, man, is making, you know, billions. Let me see if he can play soccer, you know. <laughs> you know, he, he trying to dunk, man, but he ain't tall enough, you know. Or he trying to run, play football, he ain't tall enough. You don't just beat the man up. That's what a third of Cowboy Nation is. Ha, oh, he tried. We ain't going to do nothing. It's only been seven years. We ain't going to do, you know. There are 31 other teams out there. And for the 2023 season, number four is the quarterback of this team. I can be mad all I want. But it's 108 degrees out here in Texas, y'all. <laughs> you can be mad all you want. But being mad at the sun ain't going to change a doggone thing. You know what I'm saying? I can't say, well, I'm mad at the sun, you know. And I'm going to shoot at the sun. This sun is just complaining, 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 complaining. Nah, take your butt back inside. You go back to work. Y'all complaining literally about the sun. That going to be here. You can make be mad all you want. They ain't going to make it colder. You know, come on. You just got to plan around it. Figure out how to survive until winter time come. Yes, indeed. I got Stevens, man. You're live, man, on The Nation. Appreciate you for calling in. You're live. Talk to me. What's up, Law Nation, man? I see you running a marathon. <laughs> man, I'm trying, man. Uh, I got 12 callers, man, on the line. I'm going to try to get to all of y'all. Talk to me. You, all right, keep it quick then. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Hey, I just want to say, man, haters gonna hate, man. That's that's what they do. It's in that mm -hmm. nature. Ain't nothing new to that. We all know this. But uh, good BG on Dak, man, for uh, calling them plays and you know seeing what he actually got on the field from the sideline and him being able to actually 
you know, spectating, take it all in. I think he's going to take a big step up after he's seen these playmakers he got, and these tight ends, these receive, you know, these receivers, and even the uh, the fullback got off. Shoemaker, yeah. yeah, he was going he through it. He got through. And I like yeah. the line. The line was looking pretty good too. They was doing their formation. That's all I got to say, man. I ain't going to take too long. I ain't going to take too much of your time because I know you've been on it for a minute. Yeah, you ain't lying. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. You know, that's Chef, yeah, 30, that's Chef Stevens, man. Appreciate him, man. A good call from him. And he reminded me, let me put the one-minute ticker on. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I appreciate y'all so much. Get your points out, man. I let y'all speak your mind, man. Uh, get whatever off off your chest. And there you go, 719, you're live. Hey, what up, Law? What's up, Chief? Talk to me. Hey, man. Just want to say, let's go, Cowboys. Love listening to you. Always got good content, man. Oh, man, appreciate that. What you got for the show? I'm just ready for Dak to just fall out. I'm yeah. shut these idiots up. <sighs> shut I mean, them up. Yeah, They yeah. just want to talk to him because they got to talk to him. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about it. But I'm just ready to him to silence everything. I'm cool with Lance. He'll learn good under Dak. Dak will be a great mentor. Been a Cowboy fan as long as I know. From New Mexico, lived in Colorado, so but I've always been loyal. No. Yep. Dog, man, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for calling in, Chief, man. Yeah, good call from him. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. And then loyalty goes both ways, man. I remember in college, man, I had like a Honda Civic, right? And that car could only do so much, but it got me to point A to point B. I knew that that wasn't going to be my car for the lifetime of my dog on life. You know what I'm saying? I knew that I was going to get into something that's a whole lot better down the line. But I was appreciative for what I had. Some of y'all got to be appreciative of what you got. Stop complaining all the time. Come on, man. All right, I got the next caller uh, from 818. You're live. Chief, talk to me. What's up, Law? First of Chief. all, let's say this. I want to know what that dude, who that dude's dealing was. Roquan, you got to be shitting me. Shoot, Jay. Man, that's some crazy <laughs> shit. Hey, man. I, I, Second well, off, what do you think about Will Greer beating out Cooper Rush, like upside wise? Uh, you get the same style of a football player from Will Greer to Dak, right? And Cooper Rush is a he, – he can run if necessary, but he's not really a running. He's more of a uh, in the pocket. He's very cerebral. He don't have the strongest of the arm, but he processes things pretty smoothly in my opinion. So, But you get more of the same, though, with, with Will and, of course, Trey Lance now. Yeah, of course. And one last thing uh, – on a lip key, you, you, who do you get rid of to keep him, or you don't keep him at all? Man, you get rid of you get Sean, you get rid of Sean McEwen to keep Hunter. You know, but, you go with wait, the four running but, backs. Hmm? But McEwen, they love him. And I know, I know. All, all you hear is that you know they love him. They don't. They can't wait to use him. You know, obviously Neville's gone, but who who could you cut with? Man, I love him on the team. I love that ninety five Honda Civic, man. I love that car. You know what I'm saying? I tried everything I could to keep it upright, but it was a four-cylinder and it struggled going uphill, right? And then when I finally got me, I went from a four-cylinder to a six-cylinder, and it was. And I said, I'll never go back to a four-cylinder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, that's yeah. just what it is, man. Um, I, I look at it like this. McEwen, he's a guy that I'm going to try to sneak back on the practice squad or what have you, and I don't want to uh, get the risk of – uh, of losing Hunter Lukey, you know, uh, how long, how many years Sean McEwen been here? I think it's his third year, second or third year. How many games you seen Sean McEwen do the things that Hunter did tonight? Never. That's 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 the answer. I don't right think I've ever bro. seen him actually move. There you go. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for calling in, Chief. No problem. That's a good call from him. But but y'all get with what I'm saying is just sometimes you gotta let go. I got JP, man. He's live, man. He got to let go of Brookhaven one day, man. But go ahead, man. You're live, man. What's happening, Law? Nothing to it. Oh, man. I, uh, I'm disappointed, man. Why? You got your boy Everybody KJ. Hold on. Your boy KJ played tonight. He balled. He making the team. So what you disappointed about before I, I put the timer I'm on? Sad. This is this This is serious talk. Uh-huh. And I hope you're listening. Are we all? Everybody touched the field. Mm-hmm. Last time we saw Dak Prescott, he looked like garbage. I love Dak. 
I'm going to always ride with Dak. I'm not going to bash him when he's bad or when he's good. Hey, he looked like garbage. He, I don't know the system he was playing in was garbage. You can say that. Mm-hmm. All right. What do you say now? You going to come back? You going to play in the preseason? You going to show this new offense off? Everybody touched the field besides them. Now, would that show in week one? We'll find out. But I'm disappointed. If I could write a letter to Mike McCarthy, I'm going to say get it together because you're on your last you're on your last high rule. Wait a minute. What are you disappointed about, my brother, before I put the time yeah, on you? I did not see them, that offense get out there and play. Oh, the number That's one team offense. Well, they're looking yeah. at it like there's two seasons in a row that they didn't do that, right? Right. <clears throat> it made it, the name of the game is making it to the playoffs. And right. that's what they're aiming for. The regular season, I think that's the floor for the Cowboys now. But they do, they do need to position themselves a whole lot better because you can be one or two games and be out of it. I'm talking about as far as your positioning in the playoffs. So, right. uh, JP, man, so don't be angry because they're looking at a philosophy. Um, we, we, are, not, we are second I, and third team deep. I'm not angry. Know. I'm uh, not angry. You're I'm frustrated. Disappointed. Or disappointed, I mean. What I'm saying, yes. I, yeah. I, I, I'm saying give me five minutes, give me ten minutes out there on the field. You calling plays on the sideline, you being cute, bring it to the field and show me that all season and show me you can run this offense to get to the playoffs to get past those elite teams. You got a tough schedule coming up. Now, it ain't all going to be on him. It's going to be on the defense, too. But nobody got on the field this preseason. Everybody else got on the field. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's just everybody. how it goes, man. And uh, JP, so you're trying we, to say, oh, we don't want injuries. Oh, we're cool. Injuries are part of the game. It's part of the game. Give me some minutes. Yeah, give me some minutes. All right, then take your butt out. It's a it's an unproven it's, it's this, an unproven if philosophy. Mike behind, if Mike is behind this. It will show in week one, week two, week three. You got to have that rhythm against different opponents. We're going to see how this plays out. But get on the field. That's where the battle is won. Not we got, we got two weeks. We got two weeks, and I want you to call two in weeks. at halftime, JP. I want you to call yeah. in at halftime against the Giants. I will call in before halftime. Uh, pre-game show. I will call show in throughout the week. So, so, so if, if we put 30 or 40 points on those boys, you're going to make a formal apology, right? But if we lose, no, I'm going to make gonna a formal apology on behalf good, of Mike McCarthy. Say, no, 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 no. Uh-huh. I'm going to say, good job. That wasn't a mediocre team. Now I want to see. Wait a minute. I'm that's the Giants. They, they were a playoff I'm, I'm, team. I'm going to San Francisco in October to see the game against a good defense. I appreciate I you, JP. What's happening? I appreciate you, anyway, JP. Anyway, I love this. I still love this team, but I need to see my eyes wide open. No doubt, man. It's a good call from Steel. And look, I'm gonna say this though: it's impossible to please all Cowboy fans. Law, do you have any truth to this? I've literally seen. I'm old enough to remember. In 2021, close out of the season, we put 50 points on the Washington team on the final game, something like that. Close to 50 points. Go to the playoffs, get whooped, straight to the crib. Right? 50 points. Play the starters. Do all of this. Man, blow the team out. Show them, show them that what we can do. Get to the playoff lose. Everybody was happy that we beat the brakes off the Washington team. Right? For us... To go and to play the Washington team last year to lose and everybody complaining about it. Even though they heard the coach say we was experimenting on defense. We was experimenting here. We was not trying to showcase everything. For us to lose against Washington, to beat the playoff team that we didn't win on the road in 30 years. In 30 years. That's people that's watching this channel. There's not even 30. We haven't won in 30 years on the road on the playoffs. We never beat Tom Brady. We never beat Tom Brady. The odds absolutely against us, plus we playing on a Monday night. It was some crazy record of us playing on Monday night too. For us to win 
in spite of the kicker missing the kick on every single play. Even I, who never kicked the ball, probably could have made at least one. For us to say, oh, man, that team was old and great. But the same people within less than 12 to no, 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 less than 20 weeks ago said that Dak Prescott can't beat a good Tampa Bay team because he broke his thumb against that same team. So a third of those people would have preferred to us to win week one against Tampa Bay, juxtaposed to us winning down at, in Tampa Bay on the road or at the home, whatever we played at. It was on the road, right? It was down. It was at our house when we hung up all of those those points on those boys in the playoff game. It's impossible. Uh, it's almost damn near impossible to please a Cowboy fan at this point because anything and everything we do is trash. It's wrong. It suck. It's trash. It's wrong. It suck. For us to contextualize the fact that we played on a Monday night with a offensive coordinator who write plays with Crayolas, who the running back got into it with the coaching staff, and he refused, they refused to put him in the game when the other running back got hurt for us to play in a short week to plan against the number two or the number one defense. And we had Noah Brown and a 33-year-old T.Y. Hilton out there. I can't make this stuff up. It's impossible. So the odds of us Winning a game on the road that we haven't won in 30 years. And if you contextualize, we haven't won in 30 years on the road. We're supposed to do that. In a short week, we're supposed to prepare against the number one, number two defensive team who played, I believe, that Saturday, who had literally a full week of rest and relaxation for us to go in there and beat the 49ers single-handedly. Without our most explosive running back on the field, with a Noah Brown, I'm not picking on Noah Brown. He did phenomenal things for us. But he was not even the previous year our fourth option. He wasn't even our third option. He wasn't even our first option. He was literally, literally, y'all, our fifth and sixth option the previous year. And he got all the way down to being our second option and third option. I can't make this stuff up. There's no quarterback in the history of this NFL that was up against those odds. Name me one. You can't find a quarterback that broke his thumb midseason and said, okay, I'm going to repair it, put it together, and we're going to win. There's not one who had their particular coordinator who was calling the plays that was on the same team as him. Not in the history of the NFL. That they said, okay, we're going to take the quarterback coach that used to be on the team to be the coordinator, and we're going to win the Super Bowl with the guy that was here for six years on the team. And we're going to elevate him from the fifth and sixth option to be our number two option, number three option. And we got, by the way, for the cherry on the top, the nipple on the titty, as my guy Vaj Lombardi would say, we will have a guy that's coming off of ACL. ACL to be our, our wide receiver to compliment C.D. Lamb after we got rid of, uh, uh, of, of my guy, Amari Cooper. You can't find it nowhere in the history of NFL for, us to, for, for a team to do that, to win it all. Whereas any team that win it all, they went and got some acquisitions all that offseason, plus – adding things to their defense. Aaron Donald, let me just say this. There's not a defensive player that was drafted in the last 10 to 15 years that is more talented than Aaron Donald. And on top of that, there's not a defensive team that put in added weapons around Aaron Donald. Von Miller wasn't, wasn't homegrown when they won that Super Bowl. There, Jalen Ramsey was a homegrown. Don't y'all see? Open up y'all eyes. They added weapons for that Rams team to win the Super Bowl a couple years back. Those boys was a homegrown. We the only team that we take weapons away, make it happen. 
Jalen Ramsey is one of the top tier DBs in the National Football League. And they added that with Aaron Donald. I can't make this stuff up. And y'all will still have the same expectations. Y'all will listen to the three ladder, the four ladder network, and y'all will say, hey, our defense is just as good. Our offense is just as good. Our coaching staff is just as good. Did y'all see what the doggone Eagles did? They said, let me take a page off of what the Rams did. (sighs) Yeah, OBJ wasn't homegrown. Come on, man. This is a... This is a league, literally, a copycat league, baby. Y'all seen when Tampa Bay, look, there will be fools to think that the Tampa Bay only won the Super Bowl because of Tom Brady. Look at the acquisitions that they did that year to put pieces around Tom Brady. Y'all act like it was just Tom Brady that year. 912, you're live on the nation. Yes, sir. Low. What's good? I love I love the back love. I love it. That's what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting for it. But I just wanted to share some stats with you right quick. Uh 14, 15, 9, and 12. That is uh that's Josh Allen's interception. Oh, I'm sorry, and 10. That's Josh mm-hmm. Allen, Allen's interception. In his career, that equals 60. Okay, I'm going to give you some more stats. 15, 10, 4, 11, 8, 13, 4. That equals 65. That's that in the sessions. In his eight-year career, to Josh Allen's five. No, I'm sorry, seven to five. 138, 166. That's touchdowns. Now, granted, that's with two injury seasons, 22 and 20. What I mean, can I interest you in a quarterback? Who who would you take in his first five years? What are we doing here, man? What are we doing? I just I'm, I just said that never in the history that a team took a quarterback coach that was pretty much on the team with the quarterback. That's equivalent man, I, to saying that Joshua I, Allen. Wait, hold on, hold on. That's that's equivalent. Who was on the team with Joshua Allen was first drafted there, and who was the oh, third no, no, string no, no, quarterback? No. Hold, 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 hear me out. Who was the third string quarterback <laughs> there? That's I, I equivalent. No, 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 no. I know you probably be on my side, but what I'm saying <laughs> is collectively, it's equivalent for us to say that hey, the the, the the Buffalo Bills they don't take their quarterback coach and make him the offensive coordinator, and we're going to see whether or not Joshua Allen will have those okay. good numbers. Those, all, all those bad numbers. Oh, no, 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 no. Huh? You, you, you listen to me backwards. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my fault. No, nah, you fault. good. You good because I what what I what I, no, what I don't okay. like what I don't like is these type of comparisons because it don't say it don't compare the full entree whether or not mm-hmm. it's for Dak Prescott favor or not. I don't. I just don't like it. I just don't like the comparison. I'm not. I'm not. Because actually, what I was saying was that Dak has, okay, Dak has the 65 interceptions in a seven-year career compared to Josh Allen with his 60 interceptions in his five-year career. So I'm I'm just trying to understand where all the Dak hate comes from with the he can't see the field and he's just an interception machine where that is completely not the case. He takes care of the football better than anybody. If here, 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 here's, here's what I, here's what I want to say with this, though, and I'm not trying to cut you off. But what I'm trying to say no, here no. is that coaching do matter. When Brian <laughs> DeBall got there with Joshua <laughs> Allen, he worked with him and he improved his game. Joshua Allen completion percentage was terrible. His his accuracy was off the chain. 
bad in a oh. bad way. You know, it Terrible. took it, it took it took some time for him to get together. And what what really put Josh Allen over the tops was when they made that acquisition ultimately to have Stefan Diggs there to alleviate some of those things. So and and here's here's my play on Joshua Allen. I really like his skill set. I like what he do over there at Buffalo Land. But he's not going to be scrutinized because if it was the inverse, right, even if Dak Prescott Mm -hmm. was to be picked up and be put in Buffalo and Joshua Allen will be picked up and put over here and still have those shortcomings as relates to not being in the Super Bowl, they would have been the four ladder, the three ladder network been saying, hey, this dude is is a turnover king. Not just an interception. Man. It would be turnovers. There's no one who had more turnovers than Joshua Allen last year, right? So that's how right. that's how the four ladder, three ladder network works and operate. Exactly. That's that's all I was trying to get you to say. That I mean, it it came off the wrong way. I guess. No, nah, no, nah, you good. You good, bro. You good. But nah. But uh, let's go, Cowboys. And you already know what's going on. Yes, there's no no yeah. doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. All right, we've got the next caller, man. Six two eight, you're live on the nation. Hello? Talk to me. How you doing, bro? We doing good. Warren Duncan, number one cowboy fan. Hey, I don't know who that guy was talking about let's get rid of Dak Sidney to Baltimore, but that's the wrong thing to do. Hey, listen. Everybody got to just cool out, man, because Dak is about to show his thing this year, brother. I'm telling you, when's the last time you seen a quarterback call a praise from the sidelines? If you guys think this boy don't want to win, he grew up a Cowboy fan. If you think he don't want to win, you think he'd be over there on the sideline calling plays? Nah, it ain't like that. Dak want to win. Some boys want to win for him. And they're going to work. They're all going to play as a team this year. All that defense, man, I'm calling in the demolition doom defense because they're going to be demolishing everybody. And as long as that offense can keep up and score points, and especially when they take away the ball, man, we in it for a nice ride, man. So everybody, y'all just chill out, watch the show, because it's going to be the best beautiful one you ever seen in your life, man, all the way to the Super Bowl and win. That's what I got to say, Law. Man, no doubt, I love man. You, appreciate man. you, bro. You, you do great research, man. I watch you guys all the time, man. Appreciate that, man. So, appreciate that. All right, man. And all I got to say is, let's go, Cowboys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Appreciate you, bro. All right, we got the 915. You're live on The Nation. Talk to me. Once, twice. <laughs> All right, I got my guy Tyreek, man. You're live on The Nation. Talk to me. Holler at me. Hello. Boy, I thought I ran everybody off, man. <laughs> Tyreek, you live, dog. Tyreek. Go again, Tyreek. You live now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What's going on? Bro? How y'all it. doing, man? Nothing to it, man. Talk to me. <laughs> yeah, man. I, hey, man. Nobody's gonna ever say that. I know. I know that Cooper won us five crucial games last year, and my hat. My hat is off to that man for doing that because we needed that. We needed him to do that until that came back. We needed him to hold it down, and that's what it, that's what he did. But can't nobody sit here and tell me that anybody else, any other teams out of the other 31 teams in this league wanted Cooper Rush but Dallas because he knew the system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And it's a new coaching staff in here. You know what I'm saying? Like far as the the Brian Schottenheimer dude. It's It's a new mentality in the building. And I really don't believe that. Not having a mobile quarterback is on like that. that is that the thing? Because you have to mimic your 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 starting quarterback. True that. Every team, every team almost mimics their starting quarterback. That's why Philadelphia, even though this dude is not doing good, and Mariota, he mimics. He can mimic. Uh, hurts a little bit because that's the mindset they was going in with. Yeah. Before they see him doing what he was doing on on the field. 
uh, he can run the ball. He can play action. He can, uh, you know what I mean, do some of the things, take the ball and tuck it and run. That's what we need with uh, on this team. We don't need a, a stand there in the pocket quarterback or like that because the reason I'm saying that is because I think they're going to have Dak running a little bit more this year. For some reason, I just got a feeling about it. And uh, Lemke, I'm going to say it one more time, Lemke, he deserves to be on this team. But other than that, I'm not with that other guy that said that we got to put Dak and all, them, all our pieces on the field yet, uh, on the field, because we was 12-5 and five, two seasons and we lost the first game the last couple seasons and we still in the playoffs. So that's all I got to say, y'all. I'm going to get on the phone so somebody else get on here. But peace, Cowboy Nation. Let's be satisfied with what we got, and let's keep it moving. Keep moving, man. Appreciate it. It's Tariq, man. I got Kendrick, man, uh, from the 903. You're live on The Nation. Talk to me. What's up, Law? Uh, I just wanted to kind of agree with the last caller and stuff like that. I think having a mobile quarterback is is good. Uh, you know, all respect to Cooper for winning those five games for us. But I, I'm just happy to see this game. We were finally able to see what our receivers could do. Because right. for the last couple of years in preseason, it was hard for us to – judge receivers because to be honest both of our quarterback even cooper wasn't that good in preseason so it was hard to kind of judge it. right but with cooper playing in the, all those like six games over the two years that he played in the regular season we seen his roots and to be honest his his ceiling is average at best you know what i'm saying we won a lot of those games because of our defense so a uh, uh, a quarterback that can just go low twenties and stuff. It's gonna be some games where we play some teams that's gonna put thirty high twenties yeah. on us, and we need a type of quarterback that if the passing ain't working for him, he can move and get yards with his foot. And I think we drafted Lance to really we didn't give a fourth round pick for him to stay a third string quarterback. Yeah. We got him to Poor be Jackson. a second string quarterback, so I wouldn't I wouldn't even be mad if we actually put uh, Cooper Rush on the practice squad because obviously no other team want him, and put Greer at number two and put Lance at number three until he worked himself to number two. Now, if sudden God forbid if something happened to Dak and we have to put Greer in and he ain't playing well, we can just pull Cooper from the practice squad and put him back in. That's how I feel about that. But I yeah. like how Dak yeah. was able to call the plays. That kind of proves to people that he knows how to read defenses and read the field and stuff like that. That's how a real play caller is supposed to do. If oh, you no notice, way. it was about 35 runs in this game and 35 passes. It was no balanced. Man, so, appreciate you, so, Kendrick, man. Thank you, yeah. man. That, that's a good, All right, that's man. good call, man. Good yeah. call from – good observation, too, because – when when you think about it collectively, uh, you you can say to yourself, you, you you want balance. You you want a a a situation where is Dak Prescott is. Let me just say this: Dak Prescott is not the first quarterback to to pretty much run an, an offense. There, uh, we we've seen uh, Aaron uh, Rodgers call plays for Zach uh, over there at the uh, Jets. You know, he called plays. He dialed up plays. He's in the ear. He's trying to help that guy out. He he knows that Zach was a, a first round pick over there, Zach Wilson, I believe, and and he's trying to help him out. And uh, those are those are the ways that this game is operated. Each one teach one. So and it also give him some mental reps and some clarity what to look look at on a certain play design versus a cover three or a cover two or a cloud look. You know. Uh, so, so or where he would go at through the game. So it's good to have these mock type of uh, situation, the series. I got the nine one five. You live uh, on the nation. Talk to me. Once, twice, three times a lady. Uh, I think I already had Ocean Springs and Miles, man. So that's everybody, man, that was uh, here waiting in the uh, call queue. I thank y'all, man, so much for tuning Goodbye. in for this marathon types of shows. Ooh. It's always good hearing y'all thoughts, tracks of everything. And I don't want y'all to think. 
that I'm yelling and upset at anything. You know, I'm a very happy-go-lucky person tonight, you know. Uh, I, I would say this, I'm very passionate about when I talk, and my voice, man, is, is, is a very loud one, you know. But uh, much love to y'all, man. I really appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, the Cowboys 31, the Vegas Raiders uh, 16, Cowboys got – uh, a week off from here, then we get ready for next week. It will be I get I'm getting hit up with a lot of Giants content creators that want to work in this space of uh, communicating and collabing. We'll figure out what day will work well with all of us, and we'll jump in and we will have Giants conversations. Uh, the, the week one is a game, a pivotal game to me because I'm looking at divisional games. I'm looking at the Giants as a playoff team. I'm not looking at the Giants as as relates to the Giants being two years ago or three years ago or even four years ago, dare I say. So I'm looking at week one is a game that we got to start off fast, but we may start off slow. To my guys, JP Point, we don't know what this front five look like with Tyron Tyler, Tyler, Zach Martin, and Terrence. We don't know. We don't know what Dak Prescott is going to look like out there on the field against the uh, opposing team because we the last time we did see him out there was against the 49ers, right? And, and most people do go by the old conversation that you are – what your last tape looked like. Some people go by that, right? Unfortunately. But I, I foresee this team being a team that can probably still move this ball and can average 30 to 35 points a game, believe it or not. I'm looking at this defense. If this defense can hold teams under 17 to 18 points, we winning, baby. <laughs> we winning. We just got to do our thing on the offensive side of the coin. Uh the kicker, we had reservations on him, but the team and the coaching staff love the kicker. They, they, they see the kicker being for who he is, right? A, a, a guy that's young and not a, a, not a known commodity, uh, uh, an extreme unknown. The other unknown is the running back room. We never seen Tony Pollard tote the rock more than 22 to 25 times. I'm quite sure if the Cowboys are wise, they would not have Tony Pollard toking the, toting the rock that many times, unfortunately. That's just how it goes, Cowboy Nation. I wouldn't have them floating the rock that many times. You know, I would still figure out a way to add in pieces around him. More is better as far as weaponry. Not Kelly Moore, you know. <laughs> uh, Cowboy Nation, I really appreciate y'all. One love. Appreciate those who hit those super chats. Appreciate those who shared this content. If you guys can do me a huge favor, man, I really don't bag, but I'm begging. I'm begging you guys to, to hit that like button. Share this content. Drop it off on somebody's Twitter page. Drop it off on somebody's Instagram deal. Put it in those Facebook communities. We may, we may absolutely disagree about X, Y, and Z. But that's the whole point of this. If we all agree about everything, this would, for dog sure would be a horrible situation. If we all agreed, you know, we got to have some disagreements. We got to have some frictions. Friction is good. You can't walk around on slippery surfaces. You got to have that friction. You got to have that, that, that want that's going to go against the grain, right? And I'm not here to make you guys change your minds, you know, on how you think about this team. And even if you want to be on the shade side of, hey, it's been 27 years, and not add in the context and be like, man, forget context. It's been 27 years, law. And I want the results. My job and my duty is to tell you that, hey, you, uh, when you thought when you started saying it's been 27 years, I'm reminding you, yeah, Dave Campo was here three years out of that time frame, 5-11, and 5-11. and 11. Jason Garrett was here for 13 years, can't find a job, right? Wade Phillips was here for those two and a half years. The Wade Phillips, believe it or not, never had a losing season here. The year that he had to lose the season, they marched his big butt right out of here and put Jason Garrett inside pause and he became a defensive coordinator been to two Super Bowls I think one two or one one 
while we still try to figure out, hey, don't y'all know through the Jason Garrett administrations here, what was one of our biggest impediments? What was one of our biggest weakness? Oh, defense. <laughs> we, we the team that can't get right. <laughs> you know, we had one of the worst defenses in the league because we did it backwards. <laughs> we did. If Jerry would have stand on his marbles, he would have said, you know what? I'm the owner over here, and it's going to go just like this way. We going to hire you as a defensive coordinator, and my son right here, the red rifle, red-headed Jason Garrett, is going to be the offensive coordinator. And I'm going to tell y'all what to do because y'all work under me. I'm Jason. I'm Jason Garrett's father over here. And I'm your father too, Wade Phillips. <laughs> Wade Wood. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes. Stand on it. I know for one thing, he's standing real tall on Jimmy Johnson's legacy. As the owner, the head honcho over here, I can put in a guy who never won a Super Bowl with silver and blue on in the ring of honor. I can do that. I'm the only. <laughs> Who going to tell me no? I'm a billionaire with a B. My checks don't bounce over here. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. If, if Jerry tomorrow want to put Jeff Heath in the ring of honor, he can do that. <laughs> he can. He can literally do that tomorrow. Who going to stop him? Huh, you gonna do this to me? Don't you know who I am? I'm Jerry Wayne over here. That's just what it is, Cowboy Nation. Wade did get a ring. Yeah, I did something. Not with the Cowboys, though. I think it was with the Broncos. Then he took the, uh, the Rams or something like that to the Super Bowl. Yes, indeed. He could put James Washington. He could put Law Nation in the ring of honor. <laughs> I'm a real one. I'll say, nah. That man belongs in there before me, Jimmy. And lo and behold, if D. Ware would have said that, the opportunity and the opportunity would have been even more grandiose for Jimmy, even though D. Ware never played with him. But ladies and gentlemen, on the way out, if you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep, if all of those desires of it makes you quite mad, that you don't get tired, and it makes you all hold everything tawdry and cheap, if life itself seems empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme, oh, and I mean that you scheme is about it, if you will simply go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength, and scargacity, with faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity, it's neither cold, poverty, famish, or fame can turn you away. I'm talking about literally turn you away from the thing you want if dogged and grim and besieged and beset with the help of almighty Cowboy Nation and everyone that's listening. I seen someone in the comment box said even Jason Witten can get into the ring of honor. They can make his bus with the hell or without it. He gonna get in there. He can get in there too. If Jerry Wayne Jones say so. That's just how it is. But if there's one thing a man should always do is mainly to himself stay true. Never allow someone to change your point of view unless what they bring makes sense to you. Never judge a man by sight alone, nor by the height he has grown. And when speaking, keep it at a moderate tone. Raise voices, turn those hearts, oh yes it do, into stone. You see in the beginning, it was how about them cowboys? We the best, baby. Oh, man, I love this team. Sun up to sun down, man. I'm watching every single play. I remember we was poor, broke, busted. 
and the TV had the swiggly lines on it, had to run all the way outside just to twist it, to see a glimpse or a piece of the star. From the bottoms of Mississippi, trying to get touched to these cowboys. That's how it was, for the love. But then there are those who will try to be smart. You see, they would take a decent man to alter his heart, seek to rip him apart. Those men you should never call a friend because they bend the lies around the truth. To reach and meet its end. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the bass. Go Cowboys. Let's go. Damn. Let's go, baby. Whoa. Let's roll. Let's roll with it, baby. Let's go. Give me my theme music. Yeah. Let's go, baby. If I offended anyone, charge it to my head, not my heart. I'm just passionate, especially after a win. Let's go. I don't care what would it. I don't care if this was tic-tac-toe with some preschoolers. I'm celebrating. <laughs> hey, man, why you beat those little kids up? Well, they shouldn't have been, they shouldn't been talking stuff. And they appreciate you, Jason. Jason, appreciate you. Thank y'all. Byron, Joe, David, appreciate you. Davey, appreciate you. LDTV, come on. Chris, the YouTube critic. Harris, let's go. Thank y'all, man. One love. Count that too, count it up, yeah. count it up, count it up, count it up. Lately I just wanna run it up. Need them ones, I need them fives, need them tens, I need all that I change have. to the sink, I'm losing sight. When you lay your head on that pillow, greens and pinks, it's all the same. I'm still sitting, roll my chains, take some losses when I play, charge it to the game. I'm with L, yeah, I'm with T Black, I'm with Revin now. Oh. I'm with Bay, yeah, I'm with J, yeah, I'm with Chuck. To now. all. All of my Eagles guys that's here, boy, we we love those Eagles, don't we? Oh my goodness, man, two piece and an Eagle biscuit. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Shout out to the Eagles community. <laughs> I see y'all in the chat. Shout out to the Washington team and the Giants. You know what I'm gonna give y'all Eagles this. At least y'all brave enough to say something. Those Giants, they watching in the weaves, in the thick of it, right? And the Washington team doing the same thing. But the Eagles are brave enough to talk and chat amongst us, huh? Everybody else, they here. They here. They just scared to say something, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. They hard. But speaking of hard, speaking of hard, you got to be hard from the start. You got to have hard, huh? But we got something here. Oh, snap. Did y'all hear this news? Oh, snap. We answered. I talked stuff. I thought we had it. Now it goes to show you who's a better team. Which one of y'all months? One of y'all months. <laughs> you're, you're crying. I'm hurt. <laughs> I love my Eagles. I don't believe it. You gonna flap the hat one, more, one time more time for the Eagles for the hard fight he did? <laughs> Let's go, birds fly, eagles fly. Yeah, Super Bowl champs for that. Yeah, Super Bowl champs for that. <laughs> hey man, hey man, hey man. I just love. I would do that for the rest All of I my ask life. Is when you lay your head on that pillow at night. Lay your head on my pillow. This is staple piece. And just relax, relax. Yes, indeed.
rock your shoulder like this. Rock out with the nation, baby. Paper cranes hitting hard this afternoon. Hey, bro, come on now. Come on now. If a paper crane can fly, unfree boosting. (laughs) And then free them. So I can say free boosting. So far, so far. If a paper crane can fly, come on, choir. Fly on, fly on, fly on. Fly on. Ooh. Them boys can say, them boys can say, let's get on up out of here. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. All right, y'all. All right, all right. All I ask. Just all I ask, man. Just lay your head on that like button and share it around. have to be your biggest fan and 